Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of Sports Mecca right here from Rocky Top. I'm Adam Burzal. Along with me is Nick Stokes. Now, Nick, the Tennessee faithful, you know, a little weird mood today, a very, you know, upset mood. Their hometown volunteers took on the number seventh ranked Georgia Bulldogs and they got blown out of their own stadium. 41 to nothing from Neyland on Saturday. It was the first shutout in over a century for the Tennessee Volunteers. Nick, what went wrong? Well, to be honest with you, uh, Adam, almost everything went wrong this game from the offensive uh, side of the ball as well as the defense. Starting with the offense, uh, Quentin Dormany had 16 attempts, passing attempts, and only converted on five of those attempts. He ended up uh, with a grand total of 64 yards and two interceptions. One of those interceptions came on the first play of the game. Uh, also, John Kelly only had 44 yards out of 16 carries. Uh, the only way for the ten Tennessee football team to compete with a uh, number seven to Georgia team is to be dynamic on the offensive side of the ball, which did not happen this game. I mean, we, you know, we got to give credit to uh, the Georgia Bulldogs as well because Jake Fromm had a pretty impressive game, seven for 15, you know, only 84 yards. But when, you know, you're facing a team like, especially like this Tennessee team, you know, that, that's going to get the job done. One thing I did like to see from the defense, though, is they held Nick Chubbs to 109 yards. Right. You know, Nick Chubbs is most of the time puts up 150, 200 yards a game. And to hold him to 109 yards, you know, the defense for a while there looked good. I would say that they were one of the biggest bright spots from the game, if there were mm -hmm. any bright spots. But, you know, a lot of things need to change on the Tennessee front if Tennessee wants to start winning games and, you know, become bowl eligible, because, you know, you look at the schedule for the rest of the year, they got a, they still got a couple tough games and getting to six wins now with this team may be difficult. I'd like to send a thank, thank you out to uh, Corey Sanding for that footage. He did a great job shooting on Saturday. So thank you, Corey, for the clip. I hope the equipment worked well for you. So, you know, one thing that we also saw during the game is the motivation. After Tennessee fell down by a couple of scores, it seems like, oh, here we go again, and they just kind of gave up. How do you fix the motivation problem? Well, I feel like from here going forward uh, for the Tennessee Volunteers football team this season, they have to turn the um, lack of con – the lack of being able to uh, convert on the offensive side of the ball as well as stop um, the passing, passing uh, plays from the uh, uh, opposition. Um, the only way that they're going to be able to turn the season around is to take their mess ups and use that as motivation for the rest of the season. Uh, the lack of chemistry that there may be in the uh, locker room or the naysayers, the things that the media has said about the team, that is the only way that they'll be able to uh, rally up the troops and really uh, give an effort to win or make a, bo a bowl appearance this season. You know, one thing I also think that needs to change is Tennessee's just got to get back to the basics. You know, they've got to figure out who they are, what kind of team they gonna, are they going to be. Are they going to be a run-and-gun team? Are they going to be an air-and-out team? They've got to find an identity, and it, it's going to take that. Coming up with a bye week, huge for Tennessee. You know, Butch Jones was talking about and during his press conferences during the Butch Jones show that he's going to reevaluate every position. Now, should that have possibly been done at the beginning of the season? Probably. But, you know, you're doing it now, at least, with Alabama and South Carolina coming up. Maybe Tennessee can find a way to steal one from South Carolina and put a show up against Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Do I think they're going to put up a show in Tuscaloosa? Probably not. Alabama just looks way too strong. Mm -hmm. But as long, it, Tennessee just needs to get back to the basics, and they need to find an identity and what works for them. Now, speaking of, you know, changing their identity, quarterback situation. We have been talking about this probably since February yeah. here on Sports Mecca. So we're going to talk about it again. Okay. So obviously we still have Quentin Dormady as the starting quarterback. He played most of the downs against uh, in the Georgia game. Again, 5 for 16 with 64 yards and two interceptions. Do you think it's time for a switch? I feel as if it is time for a switch, only because with Quentin Dormady's performance so far, it's been very lackluster. Um, I feel as if you have to give uh, Jared, Jared Garantano a chance right now. Uh, at least see if, see if he works if you put him into the offense a little more often or if he gets into the game as the starter. 
um, give him that confidence to try and go out there and make, make, make more plays. Uh, give him that ability and show that you have confidence in your backup quarterback who will potentially maybe end up your starting quarterback one day. Go ahead and try him out next week uh, after they come off the, the bye week against South Carolina, uh, especially seeing that Quentin Dormady has had uh, two interceptions this past game and I believe has had like five interceptions, a grand total of five this uh, regular season so far. Um, I just I just believe that uh, Jared Garantano is a more better fit for the current system that they're running, seeing that they're doing the um, pro style offense that they were doing last uh, last year with Josh Dobbs at the helm. And with you having a dual threat quarterback, I believe that that would assimilate to that current um, current scheme better than having Quinn Dormady, who was a pocket passer or a pocket pocket presence. Yeah, you know, I agree with you on that. You know, you got to kind of put your players into the system that you're running. Right. And the system that Tennessee is running right now is read options a lot, you know, a lot of quarterback sneaks. You know, we saw we saw that a lot on Saturday, you know, because the ten Tennessee, you know, while yes, they work out of the pro style, they run the spread most of the time. And you have to be able to scramble if you're going to run the spread. You need a mobile quarterback. And that's why Jared Garantano needs to be the starter for South Carolina. I was all for Quentin Dormady starting. He was my number one pick. But seeing how he played and seeing how badly he actually fits into the Tennessee offense, something's got to change. Now, do I think the problems are going to be fixed? No. I think the problems are going to be fixed when the number three quarterback recruit in the nation, Adrian Martinez from California, gets to Rocky Top next year. I've seen this kid play mm -hmm. his, on his highlight films on Huddle. He is good. He's got a great arm. He's got great feet. And he's got great recognition on the field. So I really think that he is going to make a big difference for Tennessee next season if he wins the starting job. You know, Tennessee's used to having freshmen start. You know, Josh Dobbs mm -hmm. started all four years at Tennessee. That is so true. I honestly could see Adrian Martinez being the next starter. But for now, I think Garantana, you got to give him a shot. Yeah, I believe so too, Adam. Uh, it's just, it's just you have to try out what you have now and try out your assets. See which one is going to work better uh, with what you have right now. I mean, th at, at this point in the season, it's, it's worth the uh, worth the shot. Um, looking forward after this uh, bye week, we have South Carolina, the South Carolina Gamecocks. Um, who do you see uh, winning that game? As much as I would like to say Tennessee, the you know Tennessee, I don't think going into the bye week is going to fix anything. I think that the play calling is still not going to be there. It's going to be predictable. You know, there was a fan up in the stadium calling our plays, basically. And he was basically saying, we're going to run to the right, we're going to run to the left, now we're going to throw it. Oh, look, it's fourth down, we got to punt. So the way that South Carolina's been playing, South Carolina isn't that good of a team. I really don't think so. But unless a lot of things get fixed, I think it's going to be another Georgia game. I've got South Carolina winning at 35-7. to Wow. Uh, me personally, I believe I would give them a little more of uh, credit. I would give them 10 points. Uh, I believe the bye week will do some, t some sort of wonders for the uh, volunteer football team, uh, seeing that it will give them more time to recoup and reevaluate. Uh, the coaching staff now gets to reevaluate every player, like Butch Jones has said it, that they're going to do. Um, and maybe they'll come back next week with uh, better, better prepared, better, uh, more strategized. Um, to take on the South Carolina Gamecocks in two weeks, and they'll do a better job of defending uh, the uh, artillery or the auxiliary uh, options that uh, the South Carolina Gameco Gamecocks have. I agree with you on that. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we return, we have some NFL wrap-ups from this week in the NFL. We'll talk about that. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back with more Sports Mecca. <laughs> 